Hey, Pepin. Yo, 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 yo. Expelliarmus. Is, is that a spell? Yeah, it's a Harry Potter spell. Oh, I know Harry Potter. It's the one that Harry Potter... Wait, you know Harry Potter? Yeah, kind of. I thought you hadn't read any of the books. Well, not really, but I, sometimes I, I watch you, videos and stuff. And I thought you hadn't seen any of the movies. Well, I saw the first one. So you're pretty much an expert. Uh, pr- pretty much. Oh, Nate, we need to talk. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. My name is Meter, and I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going, Pepin? Yo, yo, how's it going, Meter? Real good. Thank you so much for asking. It's very warm in here today. I am well, by the way. I'm so glad. I've trained him well. We are joined in studio here today with the host of the Savage Mythology podcast, Liz. How's it going today, Liz? Great. How are you? I'm outstanding. Thank you so much for asking. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Harry Potter. Have you, what's your experience with the Harry Potter? With the Harry Potter? Um, I've watched all the movies. I've read all the books, but my memory is shitty. So uh, mm-hmm. it'll be a fun take. And Nathan, you've done neither of those. You um, watched the first movie when it first came out. Like a couple of years after it came out in school, we weren't supposed to watch it because it was from the devil, according to my grandmother. But uh, oh, so that was a family rule, not a school rule. Yeah, but mm-hmm. we watched it in school, and I didn't tell anybody. And that's when you became satanic mm-hmm. and pushed Jesus out of your heart. I mean, I never had Jesus in my heart either. Man, that you were missing out. Yeah. So I think this would be great if we start with Nathan telling us what he knows. For absolute fact about Harry <laughs> Potter, and we can see how accurate it is that he's an expert. Okay, so we're so a s- lot of this is through memes. You've learned it. Well, it's like here, there. Uh, sometimes I would watch these like movie reviews for movies I don't see. Yeah. So it's like Nostalgia Critic or uh, Brad Jones and people like that. Mm-hmm. I think Brad Jones is a fighter, but uh, you know what I'm talking about Cinema Stop. Yeah. Uh, but he he wouldn't do anything mainstream like this. Cinema snob. He does like exploitation films. He does reactions to movies. So oh, does he? He'll like watch a movie. Like he saw Fifty Shades of Grey. And those are more recent ones, though. And then he does the review with whoever he watched it with in his car, right? Yep. And I've only ever seen the thumbnails for those. <laughs> I've never actually watched one. Actually, I probably did when he was like with Lupa. But anyway, go on. But yeah, so I've seen a bunch of things like that. I also hear people talking about it all the time. So. I know like bits and pieces here, but probably pr- probably more accurate than you guys will be. So let's let's get into this. Okay. So first, Harry is in his house, and his house is terrible because his house, his parents aren't very nice. His brother's not very nice. He has one brother, one mom, one dad. Okay. And things are just like crazy because they're like by a train station, and that train station is a metaphor for the journey he's about to go on. Okay. And so his parents are yelling at him, like, you know, throwing books at him. And that's a metaphor because he's going to learn some knowledge. Mm-hmm. And eventually uh, he's getting sent off to this other school because he's such a bad kid. And then this big guy named Hagrid comes over. And he's like, Harry, you're a wizard. And then he takes him, abducts him, brings him to this magical school. The heavens just open up. And all of a sudden he's in uh, Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. And at Hogwarts, he meets this girl named Jean. She's got like red hair. And there's also a guy. No, you're right. Keep going. A guy named Ralphie. And Ralphie also has orange hair. <laughs> you think that Harry is going to get with Gene, but ends up that Ralphie gets with Gene in the end. But so he starts learning all these kind of things. Uh, he is having f- fun. And uh, someone turns into a frog. And he's like, oh, God. But then they turn back. It's cool. All the teachers are interesting. There's one teacher who is like obviously evil. He's kind of evil, but he ends up being good, kind of. But he's like, yeah, yeah. He's from Slithering, too. And they have these like hard. Wait, what was that one? Slithering. Okay. He's Slithering. Got it. Yeah, he's from Slithering. And so they play these games like uh, Quidditch and they go back and forth. And the game doesn't actually really matter. It's just there to sell toys, but uh, it's, they still play it. And it has to do with this golden snitch. And apparently, it's a snitch. Because I don't know why. I think it'd be funny if it's called the Golden Snatch, but that's just me. 
And there's a cat that kind of hangs out a bit. And, you know, it's there forever. And it's there in the first book and the second book, especially when they're playing chess down beneath the, the thing because Harry sees something in the mirror and he thinks in himself is actually the thing that's in him because Voldemort's there. And Voldemort's this, like, huge kind of thing, this kind of ethereal. It's was supposed to be kind of sent its back through the ether, but that's actually still there. And so ends up that they, you know, go back and forth. And Harry's trying to find out who his real father is because he doesn't just have his family there his family's actually you know he's, he's got his uh, mythical family just like superman because superman has his his heavenly family you know from krypton and then he also has his worldly family mm -hmm. so he is just like trying to find who out his you know wizardly parents who they are and so you know he goes through this more and more and then he finds that slytherin guy is actually kind of evil and he's trying to fight him and they're going back and forth back and forth and then they find out later that the actually the, the cat is actually a bad dude, but it's actually a good dude. So the thing is a bad dude is actually a good dude and it's checking, catching mice, but the mouse was actually the bad dude. And so what ends up happening is back in the day when there were werewolves, they were actually kind of like on the hunt and prowl. I mean, I'm talking like a Voldemort who's actually Harry's dad. And then... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Start laughing. <laughs> no, I'm I'm really impressed right now. So, so, so he, he's actually Harry's dad, and it was kind of strange because Voldemort's actually inside Harry. So Harry has a piece of Voldemort inside of him, which Voldemort's supposed to be ultimate evil. So Harry is evil while it's being good. I mean, he's mostly good, but got a little bit of evil inside of him. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, Slytherin guy, I forget his name, and also uh, Hagrid because he's he's there for some reason too. But they're out on the prowl as werewolves and. Uh, they're trying to find something. And then one of the guys just gets turned into this cat. So the cat's trying to catch the mouse forever and this kind of thing. And then it eventually ends up being a story of mental illness because where the plot twist is, and this is never made apparent in the film, but uh, they're actually in a mental asylum. And Harry is trying to get out through these spells. And the, the uh, what were they called? The, 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 the things. Dementors? Yeah, the Dementors. Those are actually... How did I know you were talking about Dementors? <laughs> I was going to say that, too. I was thinking... Wow. That's... Go th on. Th those are actually evil spirits, but they're actually just mental evil spirits, and they're trying to nix them. And eventually, this is just the cult reality, because Perry's parents sent them away because he is crazy. Now, the story is that Harry is not actually crazy. He's just good with a little bit of evil, and he has to maintain and gain, gain that self-confidence to become a human being. And this is actually just a story of uh, humanity because humanity is born into the depths of evil and has to rise out and become awesome. Uh, Snape kills Dumbledore at some point. I'm not sure who Dumbledore is. I think he's the teacher who's like got the long beard and everything. Uh, the, the girl who uh, does the magic stuff, uh, she ends up getting with the redheaded guy. So that's kind of kind of cool. And then uh, Harry doesn't get with anybody, but he does defeat Voldemort somehow. And it's with the power of magic and love. Mm hmm. And uh, then it's not that magic is ever, is it, you know, it's not like Voldemort's ever just dead entirely. He still lives on, but he lives on in all the hearts because we're all a little bit evil. I think that's pretty much the story of Harry Potter and all of his adventures. Yep. That was, there was a lot of accurate things in there. Could you do me a favor and name all of the houses? Uh, so there's Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. um, Slytherin Door. Mm -hmm. There is, um, um, it begins with an H. Mm -hmm. Um, Horring Door? Horring Door, yeah. <laughs> and then there is, uh, the one with the sword. What's it, what's that one called again? Uh, Sword Door. <laughs> <laughs> There's Slithering Door. Gryffindor, Hordor, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is a different thing. <laughs> and and <with> Sword Door? <laughs> See, I, I feel like I should know that the house is more than I do. Because <laughs> Are you naming all the houses or just putting door after a, after a noun? <laughs> okay, I'm going to be honest. I, I was very, very accurate and legitimate with my description of the, the movie. I didn't take the time to learn the houses. <laughs> okay. But people talk about the houses more than usual because they usually talk about, oh, no, I'm actually this house. I'm, oh, I'm this house. Oh, no, mm -hmm. no, I'm this house. This house is better because there's a lot of debate about that. Mm -hmm. I know Slytherin is one. Okay. Yeah. And the other one I said is true, too. Gryffindor. Yeah, Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. But I forget what the other ones were called. Mm -hmm. It's actually weird because I was reading like a, a Reddit post that was people were like making Harry Potter references with different houses. Mm-hmm. 
And I forgot what they're all called. You just didn't retain. No, because, you know, I don't care about Harry Potter. What is your, what, a Hufflepuff? No, I'm a Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Those are the other Those are the other two. Neither of them are doors. Damn it. Okay, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. I read that one. And I don't know what they're talking about this Reddit post because they said Hufflepuff. And then I started Ravenclaw. I'm like, oh, it all makes sense. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. But I wouldn't know otherwise. But, uh, yeah, that's everything I know about Harry Potter. I think most of it was accurate, right? Sure. <laughs> Are there any any core core things that were that were wrong there? Or? Core things, probably the whole thing. What? <laughs> I don't know. A lot of it was. No, there's some that were like, yeah, Snape did kill Dumbledore, and Dumbledore That's true. was the guy with the beard. That's true. Okay. Okay. And then there was a time when Harry had. I mean, Harry did have Voldemort inside him. Yep. Yeah, he had a Horcrux or whatever. I don't mm-hmm. know what it. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean a whore door? <laughs> Hold the door. <laughs> um. So there was... Okay, so this may not be something that, that Pevin's able to talk to too much, but you very well may be, Liz. Mm-hmm. So Voldemort, when Harry was a baby, went in and killed Harry's parents. Spoiler, Nate. His parents are dead the whole time. That's the twist. <laughs> oh, so Voldemort is not Harry's dad. No, no, he kills Harry's dad and mom. Okay, well, makes sense. And then he tries to kill Harry, but Harry's mom sacrificed herself to put a old world protection spell on Harry accidentally that saved Harry's life and reflected the spell back. Yeah, it was like a love. It was something to do with love. And they called it like old world magic or something. I have no idea. So of all the other people that Voldemort killed, none of them, nobody else ever had enough love to incite that old world magic. And, and Voldemort didn't know about that old world magic. It No one has, like, it's that rare. Yeah. What made Harry's mom so special that she was able to incite old world magic in that way? I have no idea. I don't even know. Do we know if she knew about it? I don't know. Because I think she, it's just a mother's love. She well, just, so there were no other happens. people that were ever killed that, uh, that's the only time in, in any of the books or anything that I ever hear anybody talking about is that one instance. Are there not other murders? Are there not other, did Voldemort himself or his minions never attack another mother who sacrificed herself for a child ever? I don't know. I don't even know if that was even in the books. Is this like a uh, Deus Ex Machina kind of thing or Machina? Where I mean, it's like it may be, but that's my whole point is like, is it just that? Is it just like a convenience thing? Or is this like an actual part of the mythos that should have maybe been explored a little bit more? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I kind of hate that with stories, too, because it's like there's this anime I watched that was really good. It's called Mob Psycho. And in the second season, they start expanding the law of the war and a lot of different things and how it works. So it's like there's psychic powers and they start talking about how it works. And you think they're going to actually start using it or start using more of it to explain things, but they don't. Mm. It's kind of like they use it to explain things as they happen, but they never like kind of actually utilize it as a full. And it kind of leaves it like like these hanging branches out there that were never necessary to begin with. And, Mm. you know, it sounds like that plot element was there to explain why Harry got away and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't actually play into the plot besides that. I feel like it, you can go the other way with it, though, like with Star Wars, where you have this idea of the force and then you explain it with midichlorians and it like makes it stupid. Yeah. So like you can over explain something to the point that it makes it stupid. So yeah. I, I'm not necessarily asking for that. Maybe just mention that it like why either why it was applicable in this instance or this is something that has happened before not like this was some thing from millions of years ago that was now reincited this one time in this one instance like that just seems wild well yeah that and it destroyed lord voldemort it mm-hmm. destroyed who he was so yeah it's one thing that uh J. R. L. tolkien does pretty well mm-hmm which is that uh, he introduces like lots of weird elements like that. So there might be a, a moment in a book that's kind of like that, but and he actually has like this whole mythos behind it. So it actually makes sense why the thing happened the way it did. 
like it seems like it's one of a million thing but then you realize okay there's this whole lineage of people back here and they didn't use it now because x y and z and now that he is kind of you know regaining this aspect of himself now he's able to use this power that's kind of slowly going away so there's a whole mythos behind it but it's like when the mythos isn't explained for myself not not even explained but it's just like deus ex machina machina that's where i get disappointed Mm -hmm. maybe maybe there's something to it maybe like Voldemort had already cut himself up into a bunch of different horcruxes. He had already split his yeah. soul. So maybe that had something to do with it where he was already weakened to a point that th- that this uh, absolute love was able to protect in this instance because he was already weakened. Yeah, probably. So hold on a second. So the horcruxes, mm-hmm. uh-huh. those like the mentors? No. Okay. But the horcruxes, what was the horcrux? It's like a little, just a little thing where he puts a, like a piece of his soul in it. Okay. So he divides up his soul and puts them in other people's souls? Not, no. No, it can be in anything. One just happened to be in Harry. It's usually in, in specific objects so that if his corporeal form dies, he's not dead. He's still in these other things. So uh, in, one, in one, he's like in a book. In his diary, he puts a bit of his soul in that. So that split his soul in half, and then he did it into like an amulet or something, yeah. and that split it again. And then so he split it like seven different times or whatever. And one of the times it, it was split was when he did that spell trying to kill Harry. Because the protection was there, it didn't kill Harry. Instead, it just left him with the scar and a little bit of Voldemort inside him. So he Harry himself became one of the Horcruxes. So it would... As long as Harry lived, Voldemort lived. So Harry needed to die in order for Voldemort to die. Does Harry die? Technically. Oh, yeah, just nice. He did, and then I think love revived. brings him back again, or whatever. Oh, that's stupid. No Same thing that saved him in the first place. Like, yeah. But I think there was um. So one of the most interesting things to me about uh, the whole Voldemort mythos is in the the final books and movies when. Um, Voldemort has a spell that makes it so anybody who says his name puts a tracker on them and pings his name. So if you say his name, he can find you. And that makes his name so much more powerful uh, because now it's something that's forbidden to be able to be said. Otherwise, he can he can come and attack you. It's kind of interesting with uh, there's a lot of like mythology around names. So. It kind of goes both the opposite ways. In one way, you what they say is uh, if you say the name of the devil, the devil will appear. Mm-hmm. Which that, name? Jeff. Zodo. Z- was what's that? It's it, that's. Oh my god! I know too much stuff about demons and shit. But it's uh, like a demon. If you say you're not supposed to say his name, because a whole bunch of shit will happen. He says Zodo. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Yeah. How many times you gotta say it for the devil to come? I don't know, but please don't do that. <laughs> but there's also the thing with like Bloody Mary. You say Bloody Mary into the mirror like three times and then she appears. So there's that kind of thing too. But there's the idea of that was her. It was just me in the mirror. Saying the devil's name will bring it. Mm-hmm. But then there's the opposite idea of uh, if you bring evil out to daylight and say its name, then that also kills it. Mm, interesting. So there's like these two contradictory kind of like uh, methodologies in this. But that kind of sounds like one of the methodologies or kind of mythos kind of being brought into it. Mm. Say his name, he shall appear. Yeah, and I mean, it's it makes it because one of the things that Harry always did was he was never afraid to say Voldemort. And other people were always afraid to even utter the name, even when he was thought to be like in hiding and destroyed. People were afraid to say his name. It was like saying the N-word. It was like really <laughs> bad. It was, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone... <laughs> Like, it would silence a room. Like, yeah. people would be like, don't fucking say that. Yeah, he went by uh, he who must not be named. Yeah. Well, was that like a uh, analogy? To- not, uh, was that an analogy that uh, the author made? Like, I don't think that that was a dire- the direct, <laughs> like, co- connection there. I'm just, tr- I'm just trying to explain the forbiddenness. That would be a great, like, analogy to make. But Harry was never afraid to say it. And by saying Voldemort's name, it took the power away from Voldemort. So it was Harry saying, "You, this character has no power over me. And then Voldemort took that away from him by forcing him to not be able to say it while Harry was on the run. 
and hiding from Voldemort and he couldn't say his name anymore. So he was powerful against him in that way. What was Voldemort's aim? To kill Harry? What beyond that? To be the most powerful lit wizard to ever live, I yeah. think. And I think he wanted to destroy the human, the like the muggles. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, why? Because he's b- the bad guy. And wizards are superiors. Than Superior muggles. race. Like, why yeah. did Hitler do what Hitler did? Okay. He, he was kind of like a Hitler. Okay, so because they had like mud bloods, which was the dirty word to call somebody who was like half magic, half muggle. Mm-hmm. Muggle meaning human. Yeah. Meaning non-magical yeah. person. Mom. Although muggles could learn magic, like Hermione was 100% yeah. human and like like non-magic human, but she studied enough to be able to use magic and became one of the most powerful wizards to ever live. Okay. And does Hoot play a large role into this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But Hoot dies in like one of the last books and it's really a sad moment. Oh, I think we're talking about Hedwig. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about his owl? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure. I was like, who the hell is who? <laughs> yeah, with Nate, you just have to assume, yeah. and then you're usually right. Okay. Okay. And everybody with an H name dies in that in that book. That's good to know. It's kind of like Hagrid died. Well, except him. <laughs> but oh, it was like, oh no no no, it's not it's not necessarily with an H. It's everything that rhymes with dead. So it's like. Um, Deadwig and uh, I don't know. Fuck Dobby. He's dumb anyway. <gasps> no. Dobby's awful. He's an awful character. I liked him. We should fight about this. <laughs> Why did you like Dobby? Dobby was like a house elf that was really obnoxious. He was not. He was doing his damn job. And then he was given a sock mm-hmm. for freedom. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a freaking little slave. Mm-hmm. He was cute. He was annoying. Okay, why? Because he he was just like, he wanted to help, but he wasn't committed enough to helping. So he was like half-assing it, which is really annoying. He's like, Harry, I want to I save you by making things really inconvenient, not explaining anything. He's a friggin' house elf. What do you expect? So Harry gets in like all this trouble in the, throughout the whole, his whole time, through the whole book, through the whole movie, over and over and over. Harry's getting in trouble. He's just making Harry's life fucking miserable. All because he's trying to help, but he's really making things worse and worse and worse. I also super don't remember that, so <laughs> that could be why I like him. <laughs> that's that's fair. I think he's like a beloved character, just not by me. Yeah, I think he's all right. He, he's not too great, but you know he does what he does. That's the most fence sitting thing you've ever said, <laughs> and coming from you, that fucking means a lot. <sighs> so the books get more acclaimed in the movies, from what I'm aware. I think that's pretty general with every book versus movie. Yeah. Except Cujo. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing in the movies I know that they went on like for a while. So it's like yeah. the actors were too old. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're still kind of going on, but not with the same actors. They're doing like the history before Harry hmm. Potter. I don't think they were too old. I think that it shows like a good progression of like the amount of change that goes on from a freshman in high school to a senior in high school is like an insane amount. And it's kind of the same, except it's seven years, not four years. Yeah. So it's like going from sixth grade to graduation. And then at the end, you see them all married and stuff. So at the very end, yeah. And Harry does marry somebody. Is it? Is it the girl? It's the yeah, the redheaded girl. Oh, I knew it. Mm -hmm. Not the Chinese one. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Jenny, I think is her name. Jenny, Jenny, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of disappointing that Harry lives. Yeah. Well, he does die. He needs to die again. He's Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Mm -hmm. So he but lived his past tense. Yeah, lives. Whatever. Fuck it. (laughs) He lived through that event, but not all of them. What if he just never dies? Aren't uh, aren't wizards wizards end up being like well over a hundred years old, like 150, 200 years old? I think so. Yeah. Nice. Dumbledore was old. Mm -hmm. The actor who played him died. During the movie filmings, so yeah, the they first had to replace one, him. the first one, yeah. One thing I heard about the uh, recent things with the Harry Potter franchise is that it's like the author's kind of changing certain things about the characters that people don't like. And uh, is it changing or just like adding things um, that are unnecessary? 
from my understanding, Dumbledore is gay. Mm-hmm. She just like tweeted that. She's like, oh yeah, by the way, Dumbledore is gay. I think some of it, she's just throwing it out there to continue with like uh, bringing, making it relevant. See, I don't know if it's changing or not. Uh, I've, I've only heard about it in relationship to like, there's that movie by Stephen King. What was it called? Um, I don't know what it's called, but one of the characters is like supposed to be black or something and they made him white or it was the opposite of like that. But it didn't make sense with the character because the character was supposed to be like super racist mm-hmm. and something like that. I don't know. But be, when I've heard people weren't too like appreciative of the change mm. with the Harry Potter one, but I, I also don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about them um, like redoing it? Like people are talking like do pictures of Hermione and uh, all those people as, as black. Yeah. I, th- I think it's what it is. Hermione is black and that's people see it as an issue because Hermione is like described as like being a uh, very fair skin and like red hair and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's like a big part of the character for people. I mean, but some of it makes sense because she's described as having like really like her hair is really like messy and curly and stuff. So, I mean, it, to me, it makes sense, but mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm not saying anyway, I'm just, yeah. I'm just bringing up the controversy. See what you guys think about it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I haven't read the book. I don't have no, There's investment. no possible way I could care. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd whatever. Do I, what you I, want. I, if people want to um, um, reimagine her as black, then if that's how they pictured her when they were reading it, I, I, it doesn't matter. She could be Indian. She could be anything. It doesn't It doesn't matter what color her skin is as long as the content of her character remains the same. Yep. If you start saying that she's like this boisterous, uh, like voluptuous, like only cares about looks person, that's not the same character. But if it's literally just the difference between like what her skin color is, then who fucking cares? Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, more character focused than like appearance focused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I suppose if the appearance kind of like contradicts the character, that's also another thing. Like if someone's supposed to be super athletic and they're like not athletic looking at all, mm-hmm. or if they're supposed to be not athletic at all and they look like they have like a six pack and everything, you know, that might be contradictory to the character. I mean, it depends how much of that is like core to who the character is. Like if like let's say uh, that Harry was supposed to be like super tall and skinny and uh not like well coordinated and they end up making him like how he actually is which i not like i guess he's just not tall and uncoordinated he's just like a normal whatever like does that really matter as long as the rest of like the character is still there like how much does how they look really matter yeah as long as it's not a core of who they are as a person yeah there's also certain changes maybe they're always for the better one thing one I think of is uh, Game of Thrones. There is uh, Peter Dinklage as uh, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Mm-hmm. And like the character in the books of Tyrion is supposed to be like, you know, a door, but also hideous. Like the face mm-hmm. is kind of like messed up and one eye is one color, the other eye is another color and just wouldn't be pretty to look at. And I have to say like uh, uh, Peter Dinklage is one of the like most Hampson little people I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And he's the opposite of like how the character is supposed to look except for no height, but I'm glad they chose him because he's very competent in the role. Mm-hmm. And also it, he's a lot better to look at than someone who would be kind of harder to look at like that. Mm-hmm. I also think that's a little bit harder to find uh, a little person that looks really hideous. I mean, granted there probably are, you know, little people that look really hideous, but I think it, I think it worked better. It's true. Well, it'd be hard to find a little person who's really good with acting. Who's also hideous. Yeah. Though you could like technically do makeup and make them look worse, but how many billions of people are there on the planet? I feel it. I feel it's like always hard to be like. It would be hard to find a person that's just like this because like there it exists. There's no well, question. she. Well, he. Sorry, he described him as like super like hideous and mm-hmm. like a lot of deformities. So, I mean, it very well could happen. But what about uh? What about from the Goonies? That creature. Oh. <laughs> Is that was that like that was makeup? Was that a real person? I think it was makeup. Like they were able to make that work. That was also like the eighties, nineties. So, so they should be able to do even better now. Um. Well, I'm glad they didn't. I'm they glad made Taylor they went, Swift a cat. I'm glad they made Peter Dinklage more attractive. Even if they got someone else, let's say they took Peter Dinklage and put makeup on him and stuff. I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that and just had him look like Peter Dinklage because he it looks a lot better that way. Mm-hmm. I also think it would have been it would have been really off putting for the show. 
itself. Mm -hmm. Is that a bad, like, does Peter Dinklage have an unfortunate name? I feel like Dinklage for a little person is on the nose a bit. How so? Something about, like, Dinkle sounds like little Dinkle. It's making me think of Dingleberries. <laughs> Peter Dingleberry. My favorite actor. Uh, so, Harry Potter. And oh, can you name any of the books? Uh, so, there's the first one, a The Philosopher's Stone. Mm-hmm. Number two is a Saucer Field of Secrets. Mm-hmm. Number three is... That's a Pink Floyd album, right? Is that correct? Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and the second book, it just happens to uh, me. Number three, the Chamber of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Number four, the the Tower. Okay. Uh, number five is uh, Snape kills Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Number six is the Phoenix Rises. Okay. Number seven is I think the seven books the last one right. Yeah. It's um. Wait, but there's seven or eight. There are eight movies, but seven books, right? I have no idea. I know they broke the last movie up into two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the last one is <clears throat> the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> that was the second one. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Not, not the Pink Floyd album, Saucer Full of Secrets. Okay, well, I got I got part of the word right. <laughs> you did get part of the word right. I wasn't trying to say the... Uh, okay, I got lucky with that one. My favorite Harry Potter book is The Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and The Tower. <laughs> okay, okay where, where are the actual books? Uh, can you do them in order? There's The Sorcerer's Stone, which Philosopher's Stone, I think, is like the British version. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Chamber of Secrets. I know the Goblet of Fire is the last one. Goblet of Fire is fourth. All right, I'm wrong. I have no idea then. <laughs> I think third is Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh, yeah. Yep. And Gobble, like, Goblet of Fire. I would have got that one, Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, that's the one where the he breaks out of jail, which is Azkaban, which is probably a take on what's the Alcatraz. Oh, maybe. Um it's like a, a, was it Harry or water. was it it was well, Sirius would, Black? Yeah, Sirius Black. Yeah, Harry's Godfather comes back. Well, yeah, then Goblet of Fire when Voldemort comes back and kills a student. Nice. There's the Order of the he, Phoenix. He kills uh, the um, he kills the vampire from that movie with the boring girl. Twilight. Yeah. Oh yeah. Twilight C- Princess. Yeah, Cedric Cedric uh, Diggory or whatever. Yeah, 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 it's Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Because actually, like, in interviews and stuff, he's really funny because he doesn't give any shits. Like, he you should, hates Twilight. You should watch some interviews with Robert Pattinson because he's, like, he gives no fucks and you'd find it funny. I think he has to be like that because it, it's like if he went with a fame get to his head, mm-hmm. he would be, like, famous for Twilight. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't, you can't take that too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, what was the, you said Order of the Phoenix? Yeah. yeah. I don't know which one that one is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's f- five or six. Yeah. Deathly Hollows. Oh yeah. I think is the last one. Oh, yeah. I remember that. We're missing one. Somebody. There are a lot of people right now screaming. I'm thinking. I was thinking they're screaming, screaming at the whole episode. Let me see if I can. They're so mad right now that we don't know the name of this last book. Well, you know, if you know the last name of this book, give us a hoot. Give Over us at a hoot Twitter. on Twitter. 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 Twitter.com slash WNTT1. Or on Facebook. Facebook. At Facebook.com slash We Did a Talk Show. Facebook hates us, so, you know, hate them. Yeah, just uh, delete the app right now. Also, we're on Patreon. Donate to us there, but even more so, donate to our guest, Liz, from the podcast Savage Mythology. And where can we find you? God, you ask me this every time, and I still am unprepared. <laughs> so if uh, they went to Google and typed in Savage Mythology, you think they'd be able to... Probably not. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, anywhere. And the podcast is about mythology? Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. All thing. types of mythology all over the world, Norse and Greek and uh, Celtic and all sorts of other ones. Yeah. A lot about the Boston Celtics. Yep. Savage. Celtics? Savage mythology. Go check it out. We'll put links in the description, of course, as well. So head on over there. And so, Nate, what is your favorite part? What's your favorite moment in the Harry Potter franchise? I think it's probably the part where they're in Snape's kind of like a uh, thing. You know, it's like mm-hmm. he has like under his underground castle thing. Mm-hmm. And then they have to play chess, but the other chess player chess pieces themselves. And then uh, Harry finds out he's a knight. Uh, Hagrid's the queen. And then uh, Roy is he, he's the red one. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Which, which piece is red? Uh, the pawn. Okay, the he's far a, left pawn. Okay, he's a pawn, and so uh, they eventually find out more about themselves and what they can do and how they navigate the world through chess, and then they end up losing because like the chessboard just falls out from under them anyway. So that's also a metaphor for life as well because you know what the metaphor is of this whole episode. What's that? We need to talk. Nailed it. <clears throat> Did we just like clear our throats at the same time? Yes. Okay, three, two, one. <clears throat> okay, that wasn't as good. No, it was better when I was candid. Yeah. And I didn't participate either. So. 